The South Devon Railway was originally designed to have a revolutionary new type of motive power. Instead of conventional steam locomotives, Brunel recommended the adoption of atmospheric power. Patented in 1838, the theory was that stationary steam engines beside the track could transfer their power to the train rather like today's electrics. Great savings in weight and thus money would be achieved. The theory was turned into practice, and in 1847 trains actually ran along here with no visible means of power, in other words, engineless. The secret was to be found beside the line at one of the stationary steam engines. The building behind me is the atmospheric pumping house at Star Cross. This is the last surviving pumping house from any of the pumping houses on this particular section of the atmospheric railway. The building itself worked like a giant steam-driven vacuum cleaner, exhausting the air from the pipe lay between the rails which powered the atmospheric railway. And these pumping houses were situated about every five miles apart. The pipe laid between the track was hollow, with a slit along the top covered by a leather flap. A piston running through this pipe would be sucked along by the vacuum, and this in turn was connected to the train. It was called atmospheric because the true motive power was the pressure of the atmosphere itself, bearing down on one side of the piston. I determined to make an atmospheric railway using modern materials and, of course, the whole thing, the design is empirical. You have to decide what motive power you're going to use and how you're going to do it. And after a few calculations and very primitive measurements, made a working model and was incredibly surprised to find it, find it worked so efficiently. The model is powered by an ordinary domestic vacuum cleaner, which is virtually a miniature version of one of these original buildings. This is an actual section of pipe used on the line near here. It was recovered in this corroded condition after many years' use as a sewage outfall pipe. The building has also succumbed to the passage of time. Originally, the chimney was nearly 20 feet taller than today, but it was in danger of collapse and was cut back. Over the years, the pump house has been used for a number of different purposes. The front part of the building was used as a coal yard, and the upper half was a Methodist chapel from 1856 right up until 1958. So what possessed Richard Forrester to take it over? Well, my wife and I bought the uh, building in the middle of 1981. Uh, the building was derelict, so there was a pro uh, proposal to demolish it. There's nothing, no museum, which uh, tells you anything significant about atmospheric railways, and it seemed a good thing to do to open a permanent exhibition here to show people how atmospheric railways worked and what they were all about. The system did work, and it was hailed as a great wonder. For up to a year, the atmospheric system was open gradually all the way from Exeter to Newton Abbey. Unfortunately, there were many teething troubles for the infant technology. The worst of which was the leather valve sealing the entire length of the slit in the top of the tube. As an economy measure, Brunel had left off a vital weather seal to cover the leather flap. And in extremes of temperature and humidity, especially along the coast, it wore out. Much time, effort and money was spent constantly replacing and improving it. But the writing was on the wall. It was evident that the system offered little, if anything, in economy. And furthermore, operational flexibility was appalling. 